What is going on everyone? This video is a guide on how to upsert records into a table in a Redshift database when dealing with small to medium sized datasets with Python. In this video, I'm going to cover what methods we can use with the AWS SDK for Pandas Python library to achieve this, and then walk through a real example with a CSV file in Amazon S3. So in case you don't know what an upsert is, it performs both an insert of new records while updating existing records in a single statement. You might want to consider performing an upsert when your source records contain a combination of new records and updates on existing records. In the future, I'm going to make another video on how to perform upserts on big datasets using AWS Glue, which I'll include a link in the description below. So if we want to perform an upsert with less than a thousand records, we can use the redshift.2 underscore SQL method. It accepts a pandas data frame as an input along with your destination table at name and schema. In order to perform an upsert, we must set the mode parameter to be upsert. We have to also pass the primary keys in a Python list to the primary key parameter. These are the columns that make the record unique. If you already have a single column that is the primary key, then you can use that. But a lot of times a source table might not have this primary key and it could be multiple columns that need to be added to identify a unique record. So if you are attempting to upsert more than a thousand records, it is recommended that you use a different method in order to achieve this. The main difference is with this method, it creates a temporary parquet file in AWS S3 before upserting to Redshift. This allows for quicker inserts and updates when dealing with hundreds of thousands or even millions of records. Like the two underscore SQL method, we still need to pass the primary keys and set the mode to be upsert. All right, so let's walk through an end-to-end -end example on how to perform an upsert on Redshift with these methods. All right, so I'm in a Jupyter Notebook, and the first step is to import the AWS SDK for Pandas library, which is called AWS Wrangler, and I'm currently using 2.20.1. Great, so after we import the library, we need to create a connection to our database using either the connection configuration in the Glue catalog or secrets manager. And as you can see here on the connection parameter, I'm passing in a string, which is called Adriano underscore redshift underscore cluster. So this will use the Glue catalog to reference the database connection. Now, if you're not sure where to find this, I'm gonna just quickly show you in the AWS Glue service. So if we're in the AWS Glue service under connectors, and if you scroll down to the very bottom under connections, this is where we can find the name of the connection that will have the information to our database. Now I have a separate video on how to create this connection, so I'll include a link in the description below. All right, so we're just gonna run this to create our Redshift connection. So now that we have a connection to our database, I just wanna show you what the existing table looks like that we want to update. So I'm using the read underscore SQL query. Then I'm gonna pass a SQL query to our database just to show you all the records. There's only 11 in here. So what you can see is we have categories related to entertainment events. All right, so in order to upsert this database, we're gonna to have to read in our data to a pandas data frame. So using the AWS data wrangler .s3 read csv I've already uploaded some data to an S3 bucket. And if we just read this in, you're going to see that we have three records. So as you can see, the schema is the same. I don't have to do any transformations, but we have two new records and one existing record. So what we're going to be doing here is when we run this, it's going to not only insert these two records, but pop category is going to become country pop. Now, if your data is pipe delimited or tab delimited, you're going to have to pass in additional parameters. But by default here, it is comma. So I was able to read this without any passing in any other parameters. All right. So in order to upsert to Redshift here, we're going to be using first the dot to SQL. Remember, this method is for less than a thousand records. So the first parameter is going to be the pandas data frame. So we're going to pass in the data frame that we created above. And second is going to be the Redshift connection parameter. So that's going to be the connection parameter that we created over here. All right, third is going to be the name of the table in our Redshift database. And next is going to be the schema of the Redshift database that we want to connect to. And then it's important that in order for us to use the upsert, we have to use this optional parameter called mode and set it to be upsert. And once we have the upsert parameter enabled, we need to pass in the primary key. And this is going to be what is unique in order to identify the records to update. So here I'm going to pass in the category ID because this is the unique identifier. We will not have duplicates. And it's important to note if you are performing an upsert, you have to make sure that your primary keys are not null or it's going to throw an error. 
Great, and the last parameter is I wanna use the column names from my CSV file in order to insert it to the right field in Redshift. So I've used use column names to be true. So if you don't use this parameter, it's just gonna go by the order of the data and, and assume it's going to match to your Redshift database. But in reality, it's not always the case. You know, our, our data might be in a different order for the columns. So I think it's a good idea in my opinion to use this just so you're referencing to the right column in Redshift. All right, so let's just give that a run. Great, so that ran successfully. And just to show you that we've actually inserted a record, so let's just query our database again. Actually, let me just print that. Okay, we'll give that a run. And now what we can see here is we now have our new categories have been updated. So you can see that we have our house music in here as well as classical. And we've also updated the pop category to be country pop now. Great, so what if we had more than a thousand records in our files or tables that we wanted to upsert to Redshift? So in order to run this efficiently, we would be using the copy method. So the only thing that I've changed here, as I mentioned earlier, is we need to pass in an S3 path. So this is gonna be a temporary path that the parquet file is gonna be stored. So when we run this query, it's going to create a temporary parquet file, and then it's going to use the copy command to upload that to Redshift. So you wanna make sure that this is a location that is accessible to whatever user is running this code. And another parameter I think is a good idea to include, which is optional, is this D type parameter. So this is telling Redshift the names of the parquet columns. So you can see here category ID and what it's supposed to map to in Redshift. So I tried before making this video to run this without this and actually through an error. It when the method ran, it actually got the schema incorrect and it failed. So by specifying the dtype parameter, we're making sure that we're passing in the correct data types. Great, so all we've done is added those two additional parameters into our statement, but they're pretty much the same otherwise from the toSQL method. And let's just give that a run. Great, so I've inserted the same records and performed an upsert. Great, and the last thing I wanna show you is how we can actually upsert data based on a date column so that we're only inserting the latest records into our database. So sometimes in a file, you might have some records that were updated earlier than what's in your database and you don't want those actually to be sent to your production database. So there's a really cool parameter that we can use in our function, which is called pre-combined key. And we're gonna pass that to a column we wanna to use to, to basically do that comparison. So just to show you another data set, this time I have two records that already exist in my table. However, if we look up here, we can see that electronic house dance music is not capitalized and we actually have a wrong category name in pop. But as you can see here, the date modified is less than the current categories. So you can see this was updated a couple days later. So when we run this, what should happen is we should see that this specific record because of the late date modified is later than what's in Redshift will be updated while this record will not because it is earlier than the existing record in Redshift. So let's just go ahead and give that a run. Great, so that ran successfully. And now if we query our records, and if we look, we can see now that our house music category description is now capitalized. However, this record, the country pop category did not change. So we know it has successfully used that date modified column to make that update. Great, and lastly, I'm just gonna close my connection so we no longer have that open. And there you go, we have successfully performed multiple upsets to our Redshift table. I have posted the code to my GitHub repo for reference in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you learned something or think this video will be helpful for others, please hit that like button. I have more videos working with Redshift on the way, and if you're interested in more videos related to data engineering on AWS, please consider subscribing. Thanks again, and see you next time.